Okay, welcome back to the weekly Warm Farm Check-In. My name is Steve Churchill and I'm the owner of the Urban Warm Company. We're gonna see what's going on inside this budget Warm Farm right here. We gave it a feeding of apple cores, banana peels, and lettuce trimmings last week. So we're gonna see what's going on. And here's what I expect to see. I expect to see pretty good moisture. We got the moisture under control last week with a really big addition of very absorbent coconut core. And I'm pretty sure the food waste will have started breaking down nicely this week, although I'm expecting to see some fruit flies. Now, if you didn't watch last week's video, and if not, I'd go ahead, hit subscribe now, click that little bell that lets you know every time we release a new video, and then go find last week's video where we fed the worm farm some food waste. You'll see that it was already infested with fruit flies and fruit fly eggs. I think we're also gonna see some baby worms and a few more cocoons in the mix as well as the worm population starts to recover after many months of neglect in my barn. All right, let's open up this thing and get started. All right, let's see what's going on with this this week. Like always, we're gonna do our uh, check-in here on the temperature. It's uh, currently 79 degrees uh, outside. It's just about the same inside here at 80 degrees. The vermicompost is a little bit cooler than that at around uh, 76 degrees. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and open this thing up. Actually in the humidity, 62%, a little bit little bit higher than, than we're used to seeing here. And that's the the, ambient humidity in the barn. So let's open this up and we'll uh, we'll see what's going on. Like we always do, we're gonna go ahead and uh, check the moisture. I wanna just note a little bit, you might be able to see a few fruit flies that are escaping here. That is kind of what I expected to see. I actually expected to see a little bit more, but the food waste that we put down, uh, put in here last week, uh, appears to still there to an extent, um, but really breaking down nicely. So let's do the, uh, the moisture check here, try not to, get any worms in here. Uh, let's see here, there's a cocoon. Get rid of that cocoon. Don't wanna squish that. Don't wanna squish this worm. I think we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and give this a squeeze and see. Oh, don't want that worm to get squished either. So here we go. All right, you can kind of see right there the, the water that's dripping down out of my knuckles. So I actually like uh, I really like the, the moisture that we've got this week, and that's that's kind of what I what I would expect to see, especially after uh, all the coconut core that we put in there a week or two ago. So I want to talk real fast about fruit flies here, and I did a sneak peek actually earlier this week and saw some things that I wanted to make sure that I passed along to you. Fruit flies are really interesting. They got four four stages of life. They've got the uh, they got the eggs that the females are going to lay on the rotting food waste. They've got the larva that the eggs hatch into that are really tiny, kind of whitish maggot looking things. Once they are ready to enter what's called the pupil stage, they will move um, away from the rotting food waste into somewhere drier in the worm bin or wherever they can go. Uh, and they're gonna become a much darker kind of orangish color. It's really sort of easy to see with something that's really brown like this. And then after a couple days, that fruit fly is gonna emerge from that pupil stage. It's gonna be fully developed, gonna fly around, do its thing until it dies, or until it lays lays eggs and then dies. So the entire life cycle takes about 15 days in, under normal uh, temperatures, and it actually shortens as it gets um, warmer in whatever environment it's in. So some of you might get fooled into thinking that these are actually worm cocoons, but I did take a side-by-side -side earlier this week of the pupil stage and the cocoon and kind of here's the difference as we bounce back and forth between the two of them you can see it's a different shape um similar size but different shape and different color so um that information may be helpful for you moving forward all right so fruit flies are uh, attracted to fermenting conditions and when you've got whole apple cores like this breaking down, uh, you've definitely got fermentation that is uh, gonna happen. And you can't smell what's going on here, but when I smell in the bin, I do smell the fermentation. It's kind of that uh, kind of sharp, sweet uh, scent. And so it does not surprise me that this has been kind of a, uh, a good environment for uh, fruit flies to sort of propagate in. All right, so we've got a second apple core that's in here. And you're gonna see, uh, it may be tough to see, but we've got mites on this apple core and you might even see the, uh, the cocoon that we have here. So mites like really wet conditions. And so it shouldn't surprise you that a rotting apple core is very wet. It can be definitely an, an excellent uh, place for uh, mites to develop. I wanna check now under, under this banana peel, a um, couple things here. Looks like we've got two worms that were 
I thought they were breeding, but they're not. They're just uh, they're just hanging out here. Uh, but once you notice a few things here, not only the worms are finding this really attractive, looks like we've got a baby red wiggler right in here, but look how wet it is. And I didn't add any moisture to this worm bin. This is just the moisture that happens when the food waste breaks down. You can kind of see how shiny it is. Um, you, you wouldn't think of banana peels as being something that has a ton of uh, water in it, but it does. It's probably in the mid 80s to low 90% uh, just of water weight. So as this banana peel breaks down, it actually releases a lot of water and that's the water that you're seeing here. So we'll go ahead and set this guy down over here, face down. Um, we've got uh, our lettuce, which maybe appears to be fragmenting a little bit. The worms aren't really attacking this, which doesn't surprise me. Lettuce is really not, not very sugary. It's just pretty much fiber and water. So there's not much that if I'm a worm that I'm getting real excited about here. Let's see if we can dig around and find anything else. Maybe, maybe find a couple cocoons or a couple pockets of, yep, there's a cocoon, maybe. Nope, I keep getting fooled. My eyes are, I'm getting older guys. My eyes are starting to fail me every now and then. Um, actually not seeing too many worms in this pocket that I just uh, that I just picked up. So let's uh, let's go ahead and dig around elsewhere, maybe right under some of the food waste that we've got. Yep, so we got more, we've got more worms in here kind of doing their thing. Again, this is not close to the worm population that I want to eventually have here, um, but we're getting there. Uh, I am seeing some evidence of some juvenile worms. We did run across a couple cocoons. Uh, in here, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm overall very optimistic that we're gonna we're gonna get this thing nursed back to health here uh, in no time. Okay, guys, the bin looks maybe like it's ready to feed. It doesn't smell like it's ready to feed, so I'm just gonna leave this bin alone this week. Uh, we're gonna just uh, let this fester just a little bit longer, let some of these fruit flies die off, and then we'll go ahead with another kind of more aggressive feeding next week. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. This week we saw more evidence of reproduction, which is awesome, but also evidence of fruit flies, which isn't awesome, but pretty much expected. We also saw the banana peels, which we don't consider too waterlogged, actually do release a surprising amount of moisture as their cell walls rupture as they break down. We also saw a really good side-by-side -side of a fruit fly in its pupil stage next to a red wig with cocoon. It's going to be helpful to know the difference on that going forward. All right, listen up. If you're new to the channel or new to vermicomposting, I wanna send you the Worm Farm Startup Guide, a cool little PDF that's gonna help you start up a small worm bin like this one to recycle your food scraps. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's gonna take you down to the video description where you'll click another little link to where you can get that guide immediately. YouTube is making this a little more difficult for us. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll be giving this farm a bit more of a robust feeding next week. We'll see you then.